Beltrami County is almost two million acres. And two thirds of those acres are covered by either water uh, or wetlands, lakes, or rivers. If we treat the land wisely, you know, our lakes are gonna be cleaner and more, more enjoyable for our use. If we don't treat the land wisely, we're gonna end up with what we deserve, degraded lakes. Beltrami County is almost two million acres, and two thirds of those acres are covered by either water uh, or wetlands, lakes, or rivers. So it's really uh, incumbent upon us to keep those, uh, those bodies of water in as good a shape as possible. Shorelines are part of the ecosystem. That's something we haven't had enough of a mindset of in the past, of realizing that these shorelines are, are part of the lake ecosystem, a very important part. There's always been a sense of stewardship about the lake and about the water and trying to preserve it, hold it in trust for our children and our grandchildren and for future generations that you just don't mess with it. You don't do anything to hurt it because it takes a long time to get it well again. I think it's a philosophical choice um, and we are conscious of uh, water quality certainly and also I think it just looks better um, especially from from the water if your uh, uh, if your house and uh, and grounds have more of a natural look. By just doing this you, you, it forces you to not just pull out the lawnmower when you come to the lake but to run down and get maybe a new relationship you didn't have before. Whether it's with a butterfly or with a joe pie weed or with, or with even your pine tree, how much it's grown from you know, the fall to the spring when you open the cabin again. You know, that's what it's about, you know, is getting reconnected with this place and understanding a little bit more about how your lake works and how your planet works. I see a, a high quality of water in the lake as an uh, extremely important issue. We've had so many lakes in the state of Minnesota that have really been ruined by what runs off the land and goes into the lake. Uh, we're seeing uh, certainly more tourism uh, a lot of uh, baby boomers are moving into the area now for retirement. Uh, with the advent of the internet now, people can choose to live where they like to live and do business out of their home. And uh, consequently, there's a lot of people doing business out of homes on Lakeshore here in Beltrami County. The problems, though, with that increase in use um, are manyfold. Uh, certainly, water quality is one of those, but just the development of loan, if you take an undeveloped lot and convert it, into a developed lot, there's different stages in that development process and each of those stages uh, increases the amount of runoff and nutrient uh, addition to the lake, uh, whatever water body you may happen to be being on. One of the things that people relate to and that they can see is an over-fertilized lake has unnatural levels of weed growth, which, you know, weeds are part of the aquatic ecosystem, but the problem is getting it out of balance and another major thing that people observe is you get more frequent and more severe uh, algae blooms. So you get the greenness of the lake, which you know most people don't find attractive. That really diminishes the clarity, so you can't see down in the lake. And aesthetically, a lot of people relate to that and say, well, that's not a very nice lake if, if the greenness means you can only see a foot down in the water. Um, and also smell, actually, and sometimes the the over-fertilization can lead to, uh, to events where you actually have a putrid odor. I've noticed on the lake that I live on that some of the homes where the aquatic plants have been removed in the lake are the sites where I see the loss, the actual loss of lakeshore occurring because those aquatic plants 
keep, they buffer the wave action. So if you do have sed, uh, sedges and bulrush and, and that type of thing out in the water, it does serve to protect the shoreline itself. And sometimes people don't realize that. Just the way our, our land ownership system works with private ownership, they really, we've approached them more as being a, a, a chunk of soil for, for the owners to deal with as they might like. And unfortunately, with the economic forces and the pull and tug of what people want to do for what they uh, find aesthetically pleasing for their own view, as well as um, what might might be seen as rewarded by our uh, property value system. People have done a lot of things that have been uh, to overdevelop and manicure and you know, to allow shorelines to, to be degraded as far as their ecological services and to really become a, a part of the problem in the watershed. I have had a number of discussions with realtors over the years and realtors have this perception that a green lawn to the lake with a beautiful sandy beach is what people are seeking. And they may be right, there certainly is a market for that. However, uh, I have advocated for years that in the long run, that is contrary to the best investment that can be made on that piece of property. And if landowners truly want to protect their investment, they have to coordinate their land use on that shoreline with water protection uh, guidelines and uh, practices that they actually implement along the shoreline. Erosion has been a huge problem in northern Minnesota with fairly high lake levels in most of the last 10 summers and a lot of people feeling uh, <clears throat> great damage from their shore, shoreline uh, eroding and uh, having native vegetation is a natural process where these plants have developed over the centuries to have the kinds of roots and so forth where they can deal, in fact they flourish in fluctuating water levels and instead so much of our shoreline has been turned into lawn with a sort of an ice ridge and uh, an erosion problem. And then furthermore, as far as the ongoing signs about the input of non-point source pollutants, runoff from fertilizers, you know, from impervious services and parking lots and so forth is uh, all sorts of things that don't belong in the lake will be filtered if we have a shoreland buffer with native vegetation. It's important to have the big picture where there are so many ways that society benefits from from quality lakes, uh, you know, from simply a stewardship ethic that many people hold of what we pass on to future generations, to uh, values in tourism, you know, recreation, higher quality recreational experience can be just for residents, but also as far as how it works in the economy, there's a lot of money spent on recreation and tourism, and a lot of people's livelihoods depend on that. But it it uh, is diminished if we degrade the lakes that it depends on. putting the lawnmower away and reestablishing their shoreline to a native buffer uh, will help them financially uh, with their investment, uh, with the time spent on, on maintenance and upkeep, uh, but also results in a lot more wildlife uh, and, and shoreline protection than what they had before. The lakeshore property values is the more, most direct and concrete way that we can see that you know, a big part of people's wealth if for lakeshore owners is tied up in the value of their property. In the state of Maine, they did a series of studies in the late 90s looking at how the quality of Maine lakes translated into frontage foot values for lakeshore in Maine. And so we got a grant from the state of Minnesota to replicate that research. And uh, we were able to get a real high quality data set. We had, had uh, 37 lakes that we, we followed for six years. What happened with Lakeshore property values, and we found that there was a very uh, substantial premium paid f for lakeshore property that is on cleaner lakes. When measured as really the clarity, how far down you can see a secchi disk <laughs> into the into the water is the standard measure really of not only water clarity, but it's become a proxy for measuring water quality. We have some people that uh, the scenario would be that they're going through a, a local realtor. Uh, realtors will try their best to get them to the right person. Uh, if they do not know who that right person is, they'll send them our way. As I told you earlier, what we do, uh, purposely we do an interview when we meet people uh, that are coming into our area. 
we find out the property that they're looking at or the property that they own, where it's located, and then what we do, if we're not involved, we direct them to the people that can help them. Right now, there are a couple of different ways that, that we deal with shoreline interaction with land, private landowners. Uh, the most important is education. You know, most people that do damage to their lakeshore just do it out of sheer, just ignorance. They don't know. And, and in, in most cases, when I talk to a landowner and, and give them all the information uh, about the value of the plants they have, what those plants do to protect their shoreline from erosion, help keep the fish population healthy, help keep the water cleaner. You know, it's not a hard thing to convince them that those plants have value and, and they need to manage them wisely. One of the things I'd like to see us be able to do is to provide more what I call boots on the ground type program, working with people, uh, providing uh, examples of good best management practices, uh, providing information to them, and being able also be a conduit to listen to what they're proposing to do and, and kind of guiding them a little bit. Um, I think people are, are much more readily acceptable to that than just standard down outright regulations. You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. If people buy a piece of property that has been developed uh, it, with you know, the 30s, 40s, and 50s mentality, uh, and say they cleared all the trees, they cleared all the aquatic plants, and they, they did a bunch of other things that in those days were considered to be uh, expected of people that were, that were building on Lakeshore, we can go in there and give technical advice on how you can restore some of those native plants that provide the benefits to the, to the lake and to the property owner. So the importance of buffers, again, uh, primarily is you have root zones in there that uh, protect your soil, uh, keep everything in place, can withstand periods of high water and wave action. Uh, ice action that comes in and maybe shears the, the vegetation off, it will grow back, whereas turf will just be ripped out. Uh, one of the other benefits certainly is runoff. It traps runoff, helps it absorb before it runs into the lake. Any nutrients or sediments associated with that runoff are also trapped. Uh, it serves as a native uh, habitat. Uh, that shoreline habitat uh, between the aquatic and terrestrial environments is extremely important. So those near shore environments do a lot for butterflies and frogs and the amphibians and, and uh, other critters that uh, use that for their home, uh, for nesting or for food source. They are maintenance free. And that is probably, again, one of the bigger selling points uh, with people. Once it's established, all you have to do is monitor it for invasive or exotic weeds, uh, but it's a hands-free. Uh, you, you don't know it, you don't do anything with it, you don't have to fertilize it, weed it, pluck it. Uh, it's, it's, it's intended to be a maintenance-free uh, change uh, in vegetation along that near shore. Well, I guess the bottom line is lakes are a reflection of how we treat the land surrounding them. And if we treat the land wisely, you know, our lakes are going to be cleaner and more, more enjoyable for our use. If we don't treat the land wisely, we're going to end up with what we deserve, degraded lakes. And that's, that's our choice, you know. If you want to have a clean, healthy environment, we can do it. If you don't care, we're going to end up with lakes that we're going to look at and say, how do they get in this condition? When in doubt, call us. We're more than willing to go out to the property with you to look at it. Uh, to provide some guidance. Some of the guidance you may not like. Uh, it's still a free country. You don't have to take it. Uh, but we would really ap appreciate it if people have questions to contact us. They want us to go out, boots on the ground, take a look at the property. We'll do it. Well, we basically have done uh, nothing to our lakeshore. There was an opening uh, and we have left that and that's what we have used and put our dock there. And um, so really we have done very little clearing. And we did that because um, I know that uh, Minnesota, the non-game wildlife and DNR are encouraging people to do that, but also because I'm very much uh, into wildlife. And uh, so I wanted to leave it natural. We have had lots and lots of wildlife. Uh, we've had a bear in the yard and we've had a fox sunning himself on the dock and um, we've, I, I've, uh, I keep track of the bird species in our yard and I'm up to 132 now so that is, that is very good. I really like this location. Uh, I really like what we have benefited in getting uh, and, and seeing and watching from uh, leaving our lakeshore natural and, and really most of the lot natural. I just feel it's, it's very important to 
leaves the trees, even if they're dead. The woodpeckers like dead trees. And, um, and oh yeah, the pileated, all <laughs> right. We had four pileated woodpeckers on, a, on our tree this summer. That was the adults and they're too young. And when you see four pileated woodpeckers on one tree, that catches your attention. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I just encourage people to um, leave their, their lots as natural as possible. And, and if it isn't that way, then go to work and make it that way because all of us will benefit from it. We'll benefit from it with clean, cleaner air and cleaner water and you'll benefit it from it by all the wonderful things that you'll see. So what, what we did here is we, we took about a third of our lawn. Uh, uh, we have about 100 feet uh, from the lake's edge to the, our house and we took about uh, 30 or 35 feet of that and turned it into natural vegetation from Beltrami County. Um, we heard about a program from the DNR, local DNR, that uh, the D DNR was encouraging people to uh, the different ways that they could uh, enjoy lakeshore and one of them not being uh, mowing right down to the lake. Uh, it preserves the lake. Um, if people do use fertilizers, it, it, it stops the runoff of the, the, the nutrients in the fertilizer to go into the lake. Um, and it's also, we, were, we received a few books from the DNR and it was quite beautiful done right. So we, we're sitting here in the middle of our planting and we find that it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, the DNR came and assisted us in putting about um, about 1,500 plants here, all native to um, Beltrami County. Uh, they've uh, they helped in the planting. We got a, a couple of local 4-H groups involved with the planting, and every year. Uh, it, a couple of people from the DNR come and check the progress and if we need any help and so it's been a uh, wonderfully uh, addition to our lake house. What's the name? Loads of birds, a lot more activity in the yard. Um, you get to mow a lot less grass. Um, we only spend maybe five or six hours a year weeding so it's, it's pretty self-sustaining, not very much maintenance. Uh, and the variety of, of, of flowers and grasses are just unbelievable. We have color in our yard from about June till end of September or October. Since, since there's a lot of cover to, close up to the lakeshore, we've seen bald eagles, um, you know, feeding off of our uh, dock. We've seen um, blue herons fishing right off our shores. Uh, we've seen otters. So it kind of, uh, the geese, not, not that you want them in your yard, but they'll come right up here. The ducks, the bay is full of wild rice and the ducks come real close to the shore while feeding on the wild rice. Um, so it, 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 yeah, we've had beavers and um, muskrat. So actually in, a, in a, a community where there's a lot of neighbors, we have the luxury of having that wildlife here too. I think if you're in Beltrami County or in this area, you should come over and we'd be glad to give you a tour because it's, it's quite nice. Um, it frees up a lot of time and there's, there's more than one beauty. Um, well, it's been especially fun. Fun um, when we got this, first of all, you have to understand that um, as big as everything is now, three years when we actually planted it, um, we were lucky if we could even see these little slivers of plants that we were planting. And so we really kind of <laughs> were worried at the beginning about what we got ourselves into, but this is what it has turned into. And, and so for our children and for ourselves to be able to watch the growth and watch the, um, you know, how it is just filled in and, and now it's incredibly luxurious, you know, it's just full. And um, I have come out here with my kids different times, especially the first years when we were just learning the plants and, um, and there's still more for us to learn. But um, coming out with different wildflower books that we would have, and we'd see a new flower at a, in a new season, you know, as we go through the summer, and we would just kind of page through our books trying to find and um, identify the different flowers. And 
um, because by no means did we have, I imagine we had at the very beginning a, a list of everything we had planted, but when you just get a sliver of green, it means absolutely nothing. So as things actually grew, it was just great fun for the kids and I to be able to go through and do that identification and um, to watch the progress through the planting. I think the first thing we did um, was make the decision to make our house fit as naturally as possible um, onto the lot. Uh, however, we also wanted to make, uh, have access to the shoreline. So there were just a few trees uh, to cut, but as, uh, as few as possible. Uh, beyond that, we've kept a buffer of um, probably 150 feet, um, a natural buffer, uh, no mowing, no fertilizer, as it goes down to the river. When we, when we bought the lot, we uh, saw that there were a couple of uh, large downed uh, pine trees in the water. And we, uh, maybe unlike some people, were very happy about that, we're pleased about that because they provide wonderful habitat for, uh, for fish and um, certainly turtles yes. who uh, like to sit on the, on the log. And uh, again, it's sort of nature's natural design, I think, for uh, uh, fish to use those down logs. And uh, I've caught several very fine uh, crappies uh, and bass uh, close to those uh, submerged logs. On these um, two or two and a half acres and um, we have counted 66 uh, species of uh, birds and uh, a lot of those are waterfowl but um, still uh, we enjoy birding and uh, feeding the birds and uh, uh, so we're, uh, we're very pleased uh, at the amount of nature that, uh, that being on a river provides. Uh, we discovered not long after buying the lot uh, that we are a turtle nesting area and we have big snapping turtles that come up. Uh, and so, so far we have not uh, done anything to pave or put asphalt on our driveway because the turtles like the sand. Uh, we still would like to find some compromise there because the driveway gets real muddy in the spring. So that might be a key concept. Uh, you have to make uh, compromises uh, with, uh, with nature. Um, in terms of, um, again, living uh, on a lake or on a river, um, for whatever reasons, uh, I think it's good that a house does not stick out like a sore thumb from a water view if you're passing by in a boat. Um, I've always not enjoyed looking at houses that are painted white and again their lawns are mowed all the way down uh, like a golf course. Uh, uh, perhaps it's my background in, in being an outdoorsman and, and hunting. I think it's uh, just a much better thing to fit in um, with uh, the natural landscape. And, and uh, not to be obtrusive in how you live and where you live, uh, especially on the water. Well, it's uh, beautiful when you canoe by. Uh, when we first bought the lot, we would canoe down here and uh, it was just beautiful landscape and we didn't want to change that. And also we understood that uh, the creatures who already lived here wouldn't be here anymore if we cleared all, all of the trees and the, the uh, tall grass and brush away. Both states in northwest Wisconsin, if you go to your lake, local uh, DNR office, um, they have had educational programs about shoreline restoration with demonstration sites. So if you can hook up with them, they can hook you up with actual people who have actually done this. And that's the best thing that you can do, is actually connect with the DNR to get some names to actually go visit some of these properties. Almost 90% of the people that I've worked with say, I'm excited about using this as a demonstration so that other people around my lake can do the same thing so we can really create an, a buffer around the whole lake, not just one here or one there. Uh, probably three come to mind. One is look around and see somebody's place you like and go talk to them. 
Uh, one is the nurseries in the area. Many of those people are very knowledgeable. It can be helpful. And the DNR. I think one of the best resources is the local soil and water conservation district office and the people who work there. Mm -hmm. They have good programs and uh, good uh, literature. And for example, if you um, have a tree that goes down, you want to remove it in a low impact way, they have a particular um, very nice little hoist and trailer that you can uh, snake in with a four-wheeler perhaps and take that tree out without getting, say, a skid steer loader and leaving big uh, tracks on your, on your lot. Three, four years ago it would have been, you know, a few demonstration projects around the state where citizens had actually restored their shorelines. But, uh, you know, they've really taken off and there's so many more around that if people do much searching, they can find someone to talk to that has actually done it and they can learn firsthand, word of mouth, you know, what's gone well and what some of the pitfalls are to avoid. But uh, for people interested in sort of doing their own research, there's a great uh, resource which is Restore the Shore, which is a, a DNR program, and they have a wonderful website. So if one just does a web search, Restore the Shore or Minnesota DNR under the lake uh, component of the DNR website. This is just an incredible resource. They, uh, one of the things they list is something like 20,000 native plants around the state of Minnesota and they actually spell out which ones are more prevalent in which of the different eco-regions in Minnesota. Um, some of the different properties of these different plants, you know, which ones are best for attracting butterflies and, and this and that. and. Uh, so yeah, people who are interested, they're, you know, it's really uh, encouraging how much there is out there to help us learn so we can move forward and, and uh, do better by our lakes. These are public waters. This is a resource to the public, not just to the people that live on the lake. Uh, and everyone has a responsibility to protect that public resource for future generations.